Welcome back to Sunday Sports Extra. We're going to continue to talk a little bit of football. The College of Idaho football team recently held their spring game. Yeah, after starting last season 0-5, the C of I won their final six games of the year to earn a number 22 national ranking to end the season. With all 11 starters <laughs> back on offense, there is a ton of momentum heading into this fall for Mike Morosky's program. Going back to the spring game highlights a few weekends ago, always great to see Coach Mo. And former Boise State All-American Nate Potter, now the Yotes O-line coach. See if I returns all 11 starters as we were talking about, including running back Nick Calzaretta, one of many talented RBs on the roster, a gain of 29 right there. If only Coach Morosky was here to talk about expectations. <laughs> a big reason for him is because of this kid, senior QB Darius James Peterson. We call him DJ, DJP. He keeps the play alive and then fires it down to Connor Richardson, who makes the catch along the sidelines. Tristan Elisi, one of four starters back for the Yotes defensive secondary coming up big right there with the TFL right there on Richardson. Eventually they'd punch this thing in for the score and after the game was over well we caught up with coach Morosky and well, he says that he's got a talented and experienced team coming back this fall. Spring has been great. Uh, we have a lot of experience coming back. There's always the injury thing but uh, we got enough guys to really practice hard and compete against each other and just excited about our group. It's unmistakable to me that we, we just feel better. Uh, we feel uh, more mature and, uh, and there's a little bit of a air of we belong, we can be really good. <laughs> on that note, you know, I'm just not done talking about Yoke football just, <laughs> just quite yet. And I know I said I wish Morosky was in studio, but guess what? Coach actually is in studio. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Coach Morosky kicking off year number six. Year six. It's exciting. I think the guys are ready. <laughs> Caldwell's ready and the whole valley, I think. We're going to be a really exciting team, I think. Mm -hmm. you, you, you look at what you have coming back, Coach Mo. 11 starters on offense, 10 on defense. You've been a head coach for a long, long time at all levels of football. You ever had this much experience returning to a team? Uh, I don't think so, and yet an experience is a, is a loaded term. My old college coach, uh, Jim Soaker, used to say you win with experience. Yeah. But I've had to step back a little bit and define that a little bit. I think what's, what really sets our experience uh, apart is that guys were in meaningful games, mm -hmm. really big games, really clutch opportunities, and they came through that that second half of the season there was a bunch of close games those were not easy games <laughs> and everybody seems like they're returning everybody so the conference isn't going to be any easier in fact it's going to be maybe as strong as it's ever been but i think just as i was trying to get to on that that tape was uh it just feels like we learned what we needed to learn we learned how hard it is to be good how hard it is to win and uh that's fun too. I mean, that's fun when you get a team that's growing and maturing like that. I do think it's kind of an interesting dynamic though, because as you, you know, I, I don't know if you, straight experience, I don't know if that just does translate into wins. You hope that experience leads to guys taking care of the little things and operating under pressure and having been there and done that and succeeding. But you, you just can't kind of show up to the yard and be like, ah, oh, we're experienced, we're gonna, we're gonna win games. So how maybe do you kind of still keep the edge? You know, so, so many of these guys over the last couple of years, they have been climbing and trying to earn playing time. Now a lot of them have been there. So how do you, mm -hmm. in a way, do you almost kind of, I don't wanna say keep them uncomfortable, but keep the edge on these guys? Right, well, the first part of your question was, you know, just, it can backfire on you too mm -hmm. sometimes when, you, when the, um, your excitement is so high. Two years ago, we finished well too. Last year in, in, in uh, training camp, we were talking about how he wanted to start, how he wanted to finish, make a run at the playoffs, make a run at the conference, all those sorts of things, and we start 0-5. So it was quite the wake-up call. The great thing about that, so it was disappointing to them, to me, to everybody, I think, but I think what showed through was the substance of we are getting better, mm -hmm. and we are a little bit tougher, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And I think that's what I kind of, we, yeah. we talk about a lot is, uh, just being a tough team. And uh, physically, yes, we gotta be able to run the ball, we gotta be able to stop, stop the run like everybody in the country is saying they're gonna do, but also mentally and emotionally, and that's what I think makes football a great game. You look at all your starters coming back, leading the way, we just talked about him, showed him in the highlights, Darius James Peterson. A, how dynamic is he, but B, when you have a quarterback like that, how much does that help the rest of the team around? Well, he missed the first two weeks of spring ball, and the, and the second two weeks of spring ball was like a whole different 
spring camp, <laughs> and it was and it was great. And and not just that he was good and he was very good, but uh, it just lifted everybody up. So so that's kind of what I mean by experience too. Is that when you got and and Bill Walsh used to talk about that. It's the second half of the roster that you really win with, and those are the guys that have gotten so much better for us. But back to Darius. I think he's one of the most dynamic players in the country, yeah. and, and arguably at any level, you know, relative to, to who we're playing right. against. Mm -hmm. So, so I hope fans will come out and watch. I think he's Absolutely. a guy that you want to see play. He's he's special. He's yeah. strong. He we put a lot on his plate in terms of running the option in the run game, and then West Coast offense in the pass game. So so he's really come a long way. So I couldn't be more excited about him. Yeah, he's a kid. And we were kind of talking about this in, in regards to another quarterback before we, we got on the desk here. But um, he's also a guy that just has a presence, like a, a, a kid that I think a lot of the, there's a lot of buy in around him in terms of guys want to play for him, too. I think so. I think so. He throws the ball deep extremely well. I think uh, I think you mentioned, Will, we have all those starters coming back. Three of them are receivers, yeah. and, uh, and they're very good. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Keegan Crafton, 6'4", and Connor Richardson had a breakout year last year, and Hunter Juarez, Darius's high school teammate, is, <laughs> is a, for our level, a big speed guy. He's a 4'5 guy. So, so uh, those guys, I, and they're the hardest workers and, and uh, fantastic people, and, and um, you know, it's really exciting. You need, you do need weapons around your quarterback. Right. The line's strong. I think we have good tight ends, and our running back group is good too. So we have a chance to, to have Darius's uh, dynamite or dynamics. You <laughs> mm -hmm. know, really, you know, flourish. And I know that he's not necessarily a local kid, but I know one thing that we really appreciate yeah. um, is when we we cover all these kids on Friday nights on on Friday night football here on KTVB. And then now we're seeing a lot of them transition right into your program. And I, I feel like there has been there have been times where maybe you went just a little bit away from recruiting Idaho, but now it just seems like you are just all back in it once again. And we see just a number of big ga games, whether it was Ed over at Timberline or Dylan over at Mountain View. I mean, not, not only are you getting guys, you're getting like the best of the best out of the five ASIC and four ASIC for that matter. Yeah, we think we really had a great recruiting year and, and hats off to to my assistant coaches, the relationships that we have with the, the Valley coaches and, and really all, all over Idaho. We made that a, a real emphasis and it's frankly, it's been more competitive mm -hmm. since I was here. I think I've told you guys even that the Valley's being recruited 10 times more than it was my first mm -hmm. year here. So it's competitive for guys and there's lots of good schools out there, but I happen to think College of Idaho is one of the great places in the country uh, in every sense, academically and faculty and presidents and, and uh, the support. Mm -hmm. uh, but to get the caliber of players uh, out of the Valley and all around Idaho, uh, we're ec ecstatic. We're ecstatic. They're great guys. Canyon Harper from Riggins. So, so hopefully we got the next Leighton Van Der Esch <laughs> coming. He's a little bit shorter than Leighton, but he's a really good football player. Dylan Martinez, as you guys said, yeah. is, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Garrett Reberg, we think, is going to be a great offensive tackle for us, too, from Bishop Kelly. And I could lame. I just highlighted yeah. on, my, on my sheet here 35 guys that mm -hmm. we've signed from wow. the Valley and, and think that 20 awesome. could make an impact this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Coach Morosky, thanks so much for the time, as always. We always appreciate it. We are very excited for your mm -hmm. season this fall. We cannot wait to watch it all. In yeah. Blue. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. yeah Will absolutely. and Jay, thanks so much. You bet. Okay. All right. Uh, the countdown to kickoff will continue. In the meantime, Sunday Sports Extra, we'll be right back.